<coughs> Good morning, students. In the previous class, we have started with this phylum. So, we have discussed some important and general characteristic features of phylum Cylentrata. So, later on, followed by, so we will start with this today's class classification. So, how many classes are there in this phylum? Then, followed by one more example of each. So, before going to the classification of these animals, so first thing you should remember that, so based on what? So, they have divided into three different classes. For example, if we take in Cylentrata, you will find a three different classes. So, on what basis they have divided into three different classes? So, that is what they were important. So, you write it down in one line. Based on based on dominance of polyps or based on dominance of polyps or medusae so which phase is dominant in that particular so what we call it as class so based on that so we are now dividing into three different classes so you write it down in bracket three different classes so three different classes you will find in phylum select right now so we'll discuss one by one what are those classes so first class i'll write here hydrozoa the name itself says that hydros means water then followed by when you split this one zoon means animal so specifically so these are adapted to aquatic inhabitant so that's what the, the class name itself says hydro zoons hydros means water zoon means animals so on what basis we are calling it as hydrozoans why it needs to be in this class only in phylum cylentrata so you write it down based on so based on dominance of either polyps or polyps and medusae so in this hydrozoan so different examples may come so in such example so some examples are exhibiting only polyp form and some other organisms will be exhibiting both the body forms for example you can take obelia in obelia you will find the alternation of generation it means that in obelia you will find both polyp as well as medusa so such type of organisms will be exhibiting both polyp and medusa as their dominancy in their life cycle but some other animals like a hydra you can take hydra we will commonly call it as fresh water polyp why we are calling it as fresh water polyp because of so these animal in their life cycle exhibiting only one dominant phase in their life cycle that dominant phase we call as polyp based on that either polyps or polypi medusa so one best example for these animals i'll write here examples you write it down first example as hydra hydra oligectes scientifically called and commonly called fresh water polyp well commonly called fresh water polyp so then followed by another best example for these animals obelia obelia will commonly called seafer obelia seafer third another best example Physalia will commonly called
portuguese man of war so all three are distinctive features also they have along with that so these three organisms will be very important for your theoretical point of view so either they may ask in that seat exams also in match the following or somewhere either uh, uh, common name they may ask or scientific name they may ask so that's what for the exam point of view all three examples will be very important on all three examples belonging to hydrosomes this is first class so then followed by class number 2 skyphozoa class number 2 skyphozoa the name itself says when you split these two words skyphos means cup like zoan means animal zoan means animal so for example you can take aurelia or jellyfish so jellyfish will be having umbrella like structure is it or not so that umbrella like structure or sometimes that may looks like a cup shape so this may looks like a cup shape so based on this only they have mentioned as cup shaped organisms so one best example for these class animals so before going to that you just remember how the polyp either or medusa and polyp you will find in hydrozoans na like that only in skyphozoans in skyphozoans you will find medusa as dominance in their life cycle so how we will find both are single in these organism either polyp or medusa and polyp like that only in skyphozoans you will find so dominant phase will be medusa or medusa you just remember one line information about this skyphozoans cup shaped animals and exhibiting medusa as a dominant phase in their life cycle so one best example for these animals you just note it down aurelia aurelia will commonly called jellyfish aurelia jellyfish then one more best example for this class animals rhizostoma rhizostoma will commonly called barrel jellyfish we commonly called barrel jellyfish so these two are the example for this class skyphozoans and uh, one more class is remaining in this phylum anthozoans class number 3 is called anthozoans the name itself says anthos means flower anthos means flower so zoans means animals so these organisms usually looks like a flower so that's what based on that we called as anthozoans specifically when you come across which is the dominant phase in these organisms so specially in these animals you will find a polyp is a dominant phase in their life cycle in their life cycle so one best example for these animals example adamsia you have already studied while studying that characteristic feature so one best character peculiar characteristic feature of silane trait is alternation of generation you will find the two different body forms there so one body form is called polyp and other one is called medusa in polyp body form so those organisms are non motile it means that these are sessile is it or not so these will be having cylindrical in shape so one best example for such type of animals exhibiting polyp form means a hydra and then followed by adamsia so hydra exhibiting in hydrozoans and some other obelia will be exhibiting both medusa and polyp that's what uh, so in hydrozoans either polyp form or polyp and medusa but when you come across anthozoans exhibiting dominant phase as only 
pollen. One best example, Adamsia. So, second example. Panatula. Panatula, the name itself says commonly called sea pen. It's commonly called sea pen. So another best example Meandrina. Meandrina, so based on that uh, shape of the body, so they have given that name as brain coral why because so these animals will be looks like a structure of these human brain human brain outer layer will be calling it as cerebral cortex so that region will be having so inner foldings my gyrus or sulci so due to that gyrus presence it will be having internal fold so like that only similar way in this animal body will also looks like a human brain so that's what uh, so they have called as brain corals then followed by one more best example Garbonia, we commonly call it as a sea fan. So that will be uh, looks like a fan, so hand fan. So that's what uh, we'll also call it as a sea fan. So one more best example, fungia. Fungia, it will be looks like a mushroom-like structure. That's what they gave that common name as mushroom coral. They gave that name as mushroom coral. So, all these are the different examples belonging to these anthozoa. So, all examples are very important for your exam point of view. All you have to remember along with scientific name. Common names usually will remember along with that, just remember scientific names also. So, one more best example for these means you just note it down as a sixth example. C O R A C O R A L L I U M Corallium commonly called a red coral. I have already told you that corals will be having a calcium carbonate deposition as their exoskeletal structure. So they are living in the bottom of the sea water. So that hard structure will be looks like a stone. So that the hardy stone structure will be made by this calcium carbonate heavy deposition and these organisms will be especially living in benthic habitat or living in that uh, bottom of this sea water. So that's what we call as the corals, the different types of corals you have already studied and one best example coral meandrina or mushroom coral or red coral. So all these are the different examples of this class anthozoans. So by this, uh, we'll complete this phylum Cilantrata. So after completion of this phylum Cilantrata, we'll move to next phylum. This is very important phylum. And uh, few characteristic features you will find are compared to Porifera and Cilantrata. So next, you just wrote it down. Phylum Tenophorans. In fresh page, you just wrote it down. Phylum Phylum Tenophores. See silent here. So when you split this phylum, you may get this answer, or you may get this meaning. What is mean by Tenophores? Sometimes they may ask in the exam also. Tenophores means what? So teen means when you split, teen means co. Forens. Foren means bearing. Now you can easily understand tenophores are nothing but comb bearing animals. That's what in bracket you just note it down. We'll also call it as these phylum animals as jellies or prefix you add comb jellies. Comb jellies or we'll also call it as sea walnuts. Why? Because uh, depends on their structure also will matter. So these animals will be looks like a walnut in shape. So that's what they gave that name as a sea walnut. And these will be having the combs on their body. So that's what we also call it as a comb jellies. So this is 
name what it means this pain of forum so next after completion of that we will always start with this uh, general characteristic features general characteristic features four five maximum five after completion of that we will start with this uh, uh, physiological characteristic features according to this uh, physiology point of view so starting from digestion and uh, will ends with this uh, development reproduction and then followed by development so what are different uh, general characteristic features and important characters so first uh, when we will start with this uh, general characteristic feature we will always uh, start with the uh, habitats habitats so what type of habitat you will find it means that so where these living organisms are living so you just note it down all tenophores all tenophores are all tenophores are exclusively marine this exclusiveness is there uh, this is very important so only exclusive nature you will find in two phylums so one already we are discussing now tenophora and second all are exclusively marine means we will study when we will come across ichaena or dermata in these two phylum animals only you will find exclusive nature sea water all animals belonging to this tenophora living in marine water but uh, some other phylums like porifera you can take you will find in marine water also some you will find in fresh water also is it or not like that only nidarian some you will find most of these species living in marine water few you will find in fresh water like a hydra oligactes but not like these animals when you compare with this uh, previous two phylums but these are exclusively marine inhabited this is what you have to keep it in your mind marine nature so after completion of this habitat or where they will live so then we'll move to grade of organization so what grade you will find here so these are also exhibiting tissue level of organization cellular level you will find in so what uh, porifers then cilentrata and tenophora you will find tissue level of organization when you come to platy helminths you will find organ level of organization again when you come to higher animals uh, after this platy helminths round worms you will find organ system level of organization like that so when you study completely this basis of classification you can easily write the general characteristic phases right tissue level of organization then followed by third one body plan body plan so what type of body plan they have exhibiting blind sac plan so these animals exhibiting blind sac body plan blind sac in the sense here also digestive system is incomplete elementary canal is there so but this is complete not complete or we'll also call it as digestive system is incomplete so this is what you just remember exhibiting blind sac plan up to where up to platy helminths cilentrata tenophora and in platy helminths these three phylum animals exhibiting blind sac plan it means that only mouth opening is there that mouth itself acting as a mouth as well as anus this is another important characteristic feature and then followed by one more important characteristic feature we'll call it as symmetry so we will go according to ncert so they have mentioned as a radially symmetrical so these animals exhibiting radial symmetry but actually some animals will be exhibiting by radial symmetry what it means by radial symmetry so by radial symmetry in the sense this is combination of bilateral plus radial symmetry this is a combination of bilateral and radial symmetry so what it means for example you can take 
one organism like the pleurobranchia so this is an organism So this is one organism. So what we have for so here, two ends we will find. So this is this is what anus. This is what mouth. Arising from here will be. and tackles so this will be having ciliated structure so this we call it as tentacle and this is what total organism pleurobranchia so these are nothing but so these we may call it as comb plates I have already told you now. So these animals bearing comb. So these only combs. Total how many are there? Eight in number. You just count by draw. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So total eight ciliated. So these will be having cilia or having cilial structure. So with the help of the cilia, it may help in swimming also. So all these are the locomotor structures you will find in their body of an organism. So why? I have drawn this diagram means uh, you should know that uh, what is mean by by radial and radial symmetry. This is very important point. So already you know that uh, what is mean by symmetry. If you are dividing or cutting an organism through the central axis, you are getting two equal halves. Is it or not? So for example, you can take a bilateral symmetry. So in this one organism only bilateral symmetry is also there. How bilateral symmetry? By tentacles. When you divide through the central axis, you will get two equal halves only in one plane. Not in this plane, not in this plane, not in this plane. You will not get two equal halves in any plane when you cut through the central axis, this phenophora. So by presence of these tentacles, you may get a bilateral symmetry. Along with that, branched gastrovascular canals. By presence of branched gastrovascular canal and then followed by tentacle, it may give bilateral symmetry. It may give bilateral symmetry understood so how if you cut for example you consider you don't know about this gastrovascular cavity okay sorry canal so you have to know about this tentacle at least a pair of tentacles you will find them so when you cut an organism through this central axis you are getting two tentacles paired you are getting so this is one and this is another one if you cut instead of through the central axis in this direction central axis only but the direction you may change you will not get the two tentacles separately. Mirror images you will not get. So based on this presence of uh, presence of tentacle, you are getting bilateral symmetry. Then followed by how you are getting radial symmetry. So totally how many complexes are there? Eight in number. If you cut in this direction through central axis, in this direction, in this direction, in this direction. All the complexes, if you cut in any radial plane, you are getting two equal halves. Is it or not? So based on this presence of complex, you write it down. Appearance of complex. 
appearance of complets may give radial symmetry may give radial symmetry are you getting my point so if you cut in any direction through this central axis you are getting two equal halves so based on that based on this appearance of complets we call as exhibiting radial symmetry also so that's what you just remember as so this is a combination of radial plus bilateral is it or not so by both combination you are getting in a biradial symmetry but according to ncert point of view directly they have mentioned as radial symmetry on what basis they are calling it as radial symmetry by presence of eight rows of ciliated complex when you divide through the central axis in any direction you are getting two equal halves based on that in ncert they have mentioned as radial symmetry both you have to remember by radial how radial how are you getting my point so we'll move to next characteristic feature so next character you just note it down body cavity fifth one body cavity as you already know that in basis of classification only you have studied so what type of body cavity will find up to platelet elements no body cavity is it or not so that's what we will write it as acylomes without acylomes such type of animals we call it as a acylomates so then followed by six one body wall body wall usually these animals are diploblastic these animals are diploblastic diplos means two so two germ layers you will find here so outer we'll call it as epidermis or ectodermis then inner one we call it as gastrodermis as there in the direct same we will find so between we will find not gelatinous mesoglea as there in cilantrata but this mesoglea different from this cilantrata Are you getting my point? Outer epidermis is also same. Inner gastrodermis is also same. In between outer epidermis and gastrodermis, you are finding this gelatinous mesoglea. But this mesoglea is different from that of nidarians. So this is completely different from that of this nidarians. so in the rains also same in these animals also same outer layer we called as ectoderm or this epidermal layer and inner layer as endodermis or gastrodermal layer so this is what one line information about the body wall so all the general characteristic features we have completed and the next we will move to from physiology point of view so we will discuss some important characteristic features also So next followed by is just noted down seventh characteristic feature seventh one So in this seventh characteristic feature one important peculiar characteristic feature of these tenophoran civil fine so what is that feature presence of bioluminescence property as you already know that bioluminescence in the sense this animal will have this ability to emit light what is that used by presence of this bioluminescence so this may help him you write it down as in one line function what is that main role by presence of bioluminescence so bioluminescence may help him protection from their predators protection from predators this is one function protection from their predators then second very important function is just write it down protection and then followed by second very important function 
in the detection of food it also helps in detection of food so in a light condition only they can easily detect their prey and they can easily have the digestion process it may start the digestion process without the food there is no digestion without the food so there is no uh, living organ it may be a dead so for that purpose they may get the food material for that purpose sometimes in the sea water bottom of the sea water you may find a much more slit they cannot uh, uh, communicate within that same space that's what it may also helps in communication between the two individuals of the same spaces so helps in communication also if it is to be mud is more in that bottom of the sea water means uh, so by this by luminescence property they can easily see or detect the foot along with that this may also involved in a protection purpose also protection if they see their predator from far so they can easily move away from these predators so all these are the different function done by this presence of bioluminescence so after completion of this characteristic feature we will move to the next very important character presence of lasso underline this word lasso or coloblast cells so how these nidarians in nidarians you will find this nidoblast cells so nidoblast cells will also call it as nidocytes so these nidocytes will be consisting stinging capsules to be there so that will be helps in a protection also helps in a Uh, capturing food also defense mechanism and all like that only instead of nidoblast cells in these animals you will find a specialized cells called lasso or coloblast cells are you getting my point so then these are specialized adhesive cells they are attached attached to adhesive cells on on epidermis of tentacles there in nidarians also you found that the same on the epidermis of tentacles around the mouth region you will find this presence of nidoblast cells there like they told me here also specialized adhesive cells on the epidermis of tentacle lasso or coloblast cells so what is that main important role by this helps in capture of food involved in capturing of the food by this presence of lasso cells on that tentacular region this is also very important characteristic feature of these wild animals <coughs> so after completion of this presence of lasso cells i do one little information you should remember about this locomotion so how they will move in sea water marine water so locomotion by by underline this word aid for to one star mark otherwise aid rows of ciliated coplanes i have already once drawn that diagram na in that the eight rows of ciliated comb plates i will find so these ciliated comb plates may involved in a locomotion in these animals usually plates are completely covered by cilia so that covering cilia cilia helps in swimming cilia on cilia on comb plates cilia on comb plates may helps in swimming this is the main important role of the cilia in these animals so this locomotion will also takes a very important role in these animals so after completion of this we will start with this digestive system so what type of digestive system we will find in these animals
So next note it down. Tenth characteristic feature. Digestive system. So your digestive system is incomplete. You have to remember that incomplete digestive tract. On what basis we are calling only mouth is present, anus is absent. So what you will find in the digestive system or in elementary canal? So what are different parts? Mouth you will find. Pharynx you will find. Stomach. Anal canals and two anal pores. In complete digestive system, usually we will find a one mouth and one anus. But here, what will happen? Up to stomach is normal, elementary canal. But starting from stomach, na, so single stomach may branch into two. So here, one branching may lead into one anal pore and another branching. So here, you can consider as a stomach. Stomach may having two branches. So this will act as a one anal pole and this will act as a another anal pole. So this is what we consider as a stomach. Due to branching of stomach, it may leading to two anal pores instead of one. So that's what on that base only we are calling it as incomplete digestive system. When you come across symmetry, we'll call it as bilateral. Why? Because of when you cut through this elementary cannula, you'll get into equal halves and only in one plane. So based on that uh, branched gastrovascular canal, based on presence of a pair of tentacles, we may have this uh, bilateral symmetry in these animals. Right? So there's high branching of this stomach you are finding in these animals. So write it down below this. Stomach is highly branched. Stomach is highly branched. And have and at the end of the digestive tract, they have two anal pores. Instead of one, you will find two anal pores. Are you getting my point? At the end of the Elementary canal, you are finding two anal pairs, and along with that, this point is very important. So, stomach is highly branched, and this stomach, highly branched stomach, it may get opens into gastrovascular canals. It may get opens into two gastrovascular canals. This is one gastrovascular canal and this is another gastrovascular canal. Due to highly branching of the stomach into gastrovascular canals. So that's what giving the bilateral symmetry. Are you getting my point? So now you've got I think. So this is what best another peculiar characteristic feature about this digestive system. So after completion of that, one line information about this uh, digestion. Digestion is of both. Extracellular and intracellular. As you already studied that in Nidarians also extracellular and intracellular. Like that only similar way, here also both extra and intracellular. So where this intracellular digestion within cells intracellular within the cells but what about this extracellular digestion within gastrovascular canals so you should write it within gastrovascular canal so there in cylindrata within gastrovascular cavity or cilia enteron. Like they told me here, you will find branched gastrovascular canals where the extracellular digestion is taking place. This is what information about how the digestion process is.
So next, followed by write it down. Eleventh characteristic feature. This is very important. So next. Circulation, skeleton, respiration, and excretion. Excretion, absence. You will not find proper circulatory system. You will not find skeletal system. You will not find a, a, a specific respiratory organs. You will not find specific excretory organs. All these are absent here. This is one characteristic features. All these four physiology. So then followed by twelfth, a very important characteristic feature. After that, what's mentioned? Nervous system. So nervous system is same as there in nidarians. So what is there in nidarians? Diffused network. Diffused network of nerve cells and their processes. So this is same. As they are in the nidarians. Already in previous class, you talked about this nervous system in nidaria. Like I told you here, also same type of nervous system you will find in these animals also. Then followed by sense organ. One of the sense organ you will find in these animal. We call it as a statosis. In ciliate also you will find statosis. Statosis they will use for balance or balance or equilibrium they will use this for use for maintaining the body balance how we have this brain now within that brain we have cerebellum so that is the controlling center like the totally here in these animals brain is not developed so that's what instead of that cerebellum they have this uh, uh statosis or this balance organ or it may also maintain the body equilibrium so this is what the one sensory organ and this is one line information about nervous system after that uh, we'll move to reproduction so how the reproductive system is there in these animals next heading reproduction So one peculiar characteristic feature about this reproduction means you always remember that. So here, reproduction only by only by sexual method. It means that a sexual reproduction is absent. This is not very important. A sexual reproduction is completely absent. This is what a very important characteristic feature. Reproduction only by sexual method. Actually, what will happen here? Lower invertebrates will also exhibit it. Some animals will also exhibit it. a sexual mode of reproduction, including in echinoderms, also will find a, a sexual mode of reproduction. But what happens in this animal specifically in a dinoforens? So you will not find a asexual mode of reproduction. This is a little different from other phylums. And then followed by these are hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites, or we will also call it as bisexual animals, or we will also call it as. Monoecious. All these three names are same. It means that 
सेक्सेस आर नॉट सेपरेट सेक्सेस आर नॉट सेपरेट इट मींस दैट बोथ द मेल एंड फीमेल यू विल फाइंड इन दैट सेम इंडिविजुअल बोथ सेक्सेस यू विल फाइंड इन सेम इंडिविजुअल सो दिस इज व्हाट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्सेस आर नॉट सेपरेट and uh, one line information about the fertilization so next you just write it down fertilization so here you will find external fertilization external fertilization means where exactly fertilization means you should remember that fusion of male and female gamete so of course no asexual mode only sexual mode is there so this sexual mode of reproduction will be having external fertilization means uh, after this formation of gametes from both the male and female that fusion process is taking outside the body of an organism outside the body means where within aquatic medium why because all these animals are marine inhabited in aquatic condition fertilization is taking not within the body so outside the body of an organ external fertilization right so then followed by development so development is indirect means metamorphosis is there larva first later on develops into adult one so that is nothing but indirect development indirect development so here also one larval form we will find in metamorphosis stage they will be exhibiting this swimming larva we called as cdpid larva C Y D I P P I D C D P D larva. This larva form is very important. Just remember C D P D larva. So after completion of all the generalized important characteristic feature, we'll start with this uh, classification of animals. so next classification so how these animals are classified into different classes so usually classification is not there so on what base we are classifying these organism then so classifying based on based on presence or absence of tentacles based on presence or absence of tentacles if presence is there that belonging to one class if tentacles are absence this is belonging to another class two classes are there so you write it down in bracket divided into two classes so first class is called tentaculata the name itself says that presence of tentacles in this class animals one best example for these class animals hormiphora hormiphorans will commonly called sea walnuts sea walnuts second example pleurobranchia i have already drawn one diagram now so that same example pleurobranchia commonly called sea gooseberry sea gooseberry commonly called sea gooseberry commonly called sea gooseberries 
So then third one more example. Tino plana. Tino plana commonly called home jellies or sea walnuts. Comb jellies or we'll also call it as sea walnuts. So all these three are the different examples of this class Ventaculata. So then followed by, based on absence of this Ventacle also, one more class is there, absence of tentacles in this class. Anyway, second one, class name is called Muda. Muda here, absence of tentacles. In this class animals, you will not find tentacles. Only one species example is there. You just note it down. Bureau species, B E R O P, or we we'll commonly call Sigur Sigur comb jellies. Sigur comb jellies. Along with this. Some of the tenophorans exhibiting a special characteristic feature. In that character only, if you want, you just mention. Some exhibiting exhibiting pedogenesis. Pedogenesis in the sense complete sentence, you just write it down. It may be helpful in future. Reproduction by sexually mature larvae. Reproduction by sexually mature larvae without fertilization. without fertilization. What it means, usually reproduction when it takes, when the organism will attain maturity, then only gamete formation, fusion, then followed by uh, all remaining process, developmental process may occur. But here in the, some tenophorans, what will happen? So when they are in a larval stage, mature larval stage, at that time only they will undergo reproduction and that is Without the fertilization, without the fusion of gamete, so they may undergo reproduction process. So when they are in the larval form, so this is a very important uh, characteristic feature you consider in this tenophora. Not all tenophora, so few tenophora will also exhibiting this pedogenesis. Are you getting my point? So all these are the important characteristic features. Then followed by classification on what base we classified into different classes. So with one or maximum two example, you already took from that uh, phylum Tenophora. So after completion of this, in the next class, upcoming class uh, or month, Thursday, from next to Thursday, we'll start with this uh, another phylum, very important phylum, phylum Platy elements, right? Thank you. Have a nice day.